Hey, Fab Fisher here. Today is Wednesday, July 18th of 2012. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the one and only Son of the one and only God forever, everywhere. That's right. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin mother, lived a sinless life, and he laid his life down to atone for our sins to provide the opportunity for eternal life for the wages of sin is death his life was not taken from him but he laid it down he is Emmanuel who is God with us he is the Messiah the giver of life and he is coming back our Messiah is coming back. Those who are dead will rise again just as he did and those of us who are living will see his coming and we will be transformed. We will all stand before a holy God. We cannot enter the kingdom of God with wickedness and sin. Jesus Christ sacrificed his life as the Passover lamb just as prophesied. And he sacrificed his life because the wages of sin is death. This means that sin requires death. Wickedness cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot go to the kingdom of God and have eternal life with wickedness and iniquity found within us. So Jesus Christ became the Passover lamb, the sacrifice to atone for our sins. If we would only believe and have faith in him, we will have eternal life. That is the promise that we will rise from death and that we will not be taken by the second death, but that we will live with our Messiah, our King, our God forever. I was going for a walk the other day in the woods near my house and I'm like very much in awe of my creator okay I'm I'm very childlike you know when you see uh, children and they see something that they just really like or they think is really cool they're like wow right that's me okay <laughs> I admit it, that is me. I go on these little nature trails here. Actually, they're not quite little. They can go very, very far, but um, I don't take very super long walks. These are just short walks that uh, I take with my doggy, and I take my camera with me, and I just explore. And I am so incredibly amazed and in awe of my creator. He just creates the coolest things, okay? The coolest little creatures. And if you really take time to look at the way these little creatures live their lives and how they survive and how they function, the way they're designed to function, you know, it's just incredible to me. And I'm like one of those kids, you know, you'll see me on the side of the path with my camera and I'll be focusing in on some really cool bug. And I'll be like, wow, that is so cool. Look, Lord, look, you, I just can't believe how you've created him so colorful or so intricately designed or, you know, just, <laughs> I can't even tell you how incredible and how blessed that I am uh, to be able to just find such joy in even the smallest little creature. I am in awe of my Creator. There is no question about it. And um, we spend that time together, you know. I, I ask Him to show me something and He'll show it to me. You know, I'll, I'll ask for a certain little creature and sure enough that creature shows up you know and it's just something that's very special and I know or at least I believe that he enjoys it as much as I do and it's our time together and I wanted to share it with you a little bit and let you see a little bit into my world and how I see things and um, 
just why it's so amazing to me. Um, it's just incredible and it brings me great joy to share this with you. And I hope that it brings you joy and it magnifies our Creator and just how awesome He is and how creative He is. Okay, so most people are satisfied with this beautiful picture of a butterfly and I'm the type of person that I want to look closer at that butterfly. I want to get in close and just check him out. Look in his eyes and look at this proboscis, how he's putting his proboscis into the flower and you can see his eyes and it's just incredible to me to get close up and magnified. This dragonfly, dragonflies in general are pretty amazing creatures to tell you the truth. They are so biologically micromanaged and um, if you really take the time to learn about dragonflies, they're they're incredible. <laughs> this little guy I've hunted for so long. He's just an itty bitty guy and I finally got a shot of him. Very colorful. And spiders. Yes, sorry for those of you who don't like spiders, but I do tend to like especially jumping spiders. This one saw me checking him out, so he turned around and he looked at me and, you know, he's just checking me out, checking him out. And he was a little bit curious about me, which is normal for a jumping spider. They're very curious creatures. So he just sat and watched me for a little bit, you know, not sure what to do with me. Uh, and after taking some shots, eventually he just decided he was just going to play like he was a, you know, a part of the bush. <laughs> Isn't he cute though? He's just so adorable. This bee, okay, look at this bee. I mean, how incredible. See, this is what I'm talking about. These are the things that just blow my mind. And I just, Father, look at the intricate, beautiful design of these creatures. I mean, to some people it's not a big deal, but to me it's just so incredible. That is a beautiful creature. I took a lot of shots of this bee, a lot, at least a hundred. It truly is, I mean, just look at it. It's so amazing and beautiful. Look at that. Ah, this picture, I like this picture. This is, you know, you just look at the sand, you don't see anything, but the type of person that I am, I like to get up close. So what do I do? I scoop up the sand and what do I find? I find this cute little pygmy, itty bitty, tiny, itsy bitsy. Look at it. He's, and he's just as intricately designed as the bigger, you know, bugs. This one here, most people would look at a flower and say, oh, that's nice. You can see the water droplets. But see, this is where I come in and say, but look behind that flower. There's actually an ambush bug waiting for dinner. Ah, this turtle. This was a snapping turtle, not a small turtle. Definitely not um, uh, something you want to uh, get in a scuffle with by any stretch of the imagination. But this turtle was... Uh, tolerant <laughs> of me and let me take a few pictures. I have a lot of pictures of him, but I'm just going to show this one for now. Do you know what this is? This is a caterpillar. His eyes, his head is to the left and you can see his eyes. Look how he's designed to survive. He's designed to look like, like a part of a tree, you know, but he's a caterpillar. Is he not cool? I mean, look at that. That's cool. Okay, so back on the trail. This are some pictures I took the other day of a walk I uh, was on in the woods. And I saw a few things that brought to memory a sister in Christ who made a video actually that day and also a parable of Jesus. 
and it started with just the observation of a pine cone. This is a pine cone and if you look closely, which you may not be able to see with this one picture, but I examined it, okay, this pine cone pierced through that leaf, through the forest floor, and was actually taking root into the soil. This was right off the side of the path, and it was pretty firm in the soil. I mean, if, if someone were to walk by and kick it, you know, it would, it would break loose, but it had a good, pretty good grip, and I suspect that this is how we get our big pine trees. And this made me think of seed and um, the parable of, you know, how the sower will sow seed and there's a part of it where it falls on the path. And also, my sister in Christ made a video about sowing seed and allowing others to sow seed uh, in your home or on your videos in your comments section and I'm in full agreement with her I strongly believe that we are accountable for what we sow and we are accountable for what we uh, allowed to be sown in our home or on our videos in our comments and whatnot and just this simple um, pine cone brought all of that just kind of all together for me. Her video and the parable um, that Jesus talks about where he's sowing seed and seed is very important and we can't force anything on anybody. We can't um, convince anyone of anything. That's something the Holy Spirit does but we do as children of God we do spread seed and we do it the best that we can. Okay, so back to the forest and the trail. Now, oftentimes, I will see all sorts of little things <laughs> that many people may just pass right by, but because I focus in on the little creatures that our Father created, I do tend to pick up on the evidence of their little lives and how they live their little lives. And I just did a short little um, mini photography project showing the little houses of the little bugs. They're just fun to look at, you know, and they're fun to get imaginative with. Like this is a square house. This one here is a round house, has a bunch of little holes, so maybe a bunch of them can live together. And this one on the log, see how perfectly circular and round those holes are? That's very precise. That's like apartment buildings. And this one would be like a duplex. This would be like a high rise. This one, a high rise with a twist, it has a little bend in there. And this is the best one. This is the best little bug house. This is the house of love. Isn't that adorable? And at the end of my walk, I came across a small church that's tucked away in a village on the woods edge. And I saw this sign and I had to take a picture of it. It is very true. Christ did die for our sins and we do need to be born again and we do need to repent and believe the gospel. And this was a perfect ending for that day that I went out and especially because of the subject matter that my brothers and sisters in Christ and I have been dealing with particularly with the culture on YouTube and the type of videos that we've been putting up and I just thought I would end my video with this picture. I hope that you've been blessed by this. I know I've been blessed in sharing it and I hope that this video has magnified the glory of our Creator and I hope it's brought you joy. I know that it brought me joy sharing it with you and 
God bless.